What is up, everybody? Jim to my right. Across from us, we have optics expert, birding expert, bug expert, Mr. Mike McDowell. Mike, it's great to have you back on the podcast What's, again. Thank you. Happy to be here. What's a bug expert? You. Oh, okay. A Mike McDowell. <laughs> He's got a set of binos on his shirt right now. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, we're going to talk about something today, Jim, that apparently I know very little about, and that's a parent field of view, which is a thing that Mike knows a lot about, and he brought some charts, some graphs, some math. A really wah. big calculator. And uh, MC Ryan hooked him up with, like, uh, I'm going to call this an electronic dream board. <laughs> I don't I don't really... So Mike's going to be able to draw some pictures on it. That's a good way of I've, describing it. I've already <laughs> tested it out. It does, it does, in fact, work, and it works well. It's better than a you know whiteboard magic marker type thing. That's what we were talking about yesterday. Yeah. And I, I was like, oh, we're getting advanced. We're going to get that yeah. whiteboard out. And then Ryan's like, well, we could do this. And he started, I'm like, yeah, that's on. just do that. What's cool is yeah, this is actually recording, too, in tandem with our oh. discussion. So as I draw pictures, it'll be all synced up, apparently. You know, that's what Ryan was saying. So I don't know that's how he right. does it, but he... He has a way. We don't. Technology, yeah. man. I just, I've got, We're surrounded I, by monitors in here, too, by the way. It's kind of wild. It is pretty wild. I don't ask questions. Uh, I just good. I just trust the process. Mike, um, apparent field of view. Apparent field of view. Like, just what what is it? Maybe give us a definition. Probably the easiest way to explain it is when you look through an optic, anything, rifle scope, binocular, that field stop, that's the... Um, edge of the field of view that that you see right before you as you're glancing around Mm -hmm. it's that thing it's not the linear field of view from one end of the field of view to the other Hmm. and it's not the the angular degrees per se either when you convert linear to degrees and i'll have to draw some pictures to illustrate what i mean it's relative to a, a better way to think of it rather than 360 degrees is if you hold your arms out and you've got a 180 degree angle, that circle that you see before you, it's how many degrees that covers relative to 360 degrees around you. Okay? Okay. Yep. So if you, most people have a field of view, their 1x vision, of about 140 to 160 degrees. Rarely do people have like if you hold your arms out perfectly straight and you move your fingers while you're looking straight ahead, most people can't see using their peripheral vision the movement of their fingers. But as okay. you move your hands forward, you'll be able to see that movement. That's your 1x, your field of view. All right. What that apparent field of view is of that 360 or 180, how big is that circle in that kind of degrees? Okay. All around you. There well, so is it's more like 3D. Kind of, yeah. 4D even. It's, you could think of it as like a hula hoop that you hold out in front of you. If you have it really far away from you, you have a narrower apparent field of view than if you hold it really close to you. Hmm. That's changing the apparent field of view. That makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah, I can picture that. Now, the actual size of that circle is not really changing. It's just that it's, it's placed differentially. And that may come into play um, when we do some examples um, how, how you differentiate apparent field of view from linear field of view, feet at 1,000 yards, or rifle scopes feet at 100 yards, and then the angular field of view, which is the little division you can do um, to get that in a, in a, uh, a single digit that may make um, more sense to a shopper a consumer when comparing field of view. It's not always easy to imagine feet at a thousand yards unless you're really familiar with the variety that's out there in optics. Like you may not know that a binocular with 400 feet at a thousand yards is a wide field of view. You might not know that a a binocular with 250 feet at a thousand yards is a narrow field of view. But as you look through optics, you know, and you look through uh, comparing a lot of different models, not just our brand, but our brand, other manufacturer brands, you can immediately look at a, a field of view, linear field of view specification, go, ah, that's a narrow field. Wow, look at the field of view on that binocular. That's amazing. Um, but I'm going to argue that apparent field of view, which can be mathematically derived from either angular degrees or linear, might actually make more sense to the lay user in how big of a picture window they're actually getting when you think of it compared to 180 degrees 
and how big that hula hoop is okay. that you have in front of you. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. All right, I'm going to draw a picture to kind of illustrate this. This is going to be, let's imagine this is a plateau a thousand yards away from the viewer. Sure. Okay. Let's just say there's a tree here and a tree here. Now the linear field of view at any power, at any power, is going to be the feet between point A, let's just say the center of that tree, to point B. Now, let's say we're just visually looking at this at one power. All right. And let's um, also imagine that with us we have a uh, 10 by 42 binocular that has a linear field of view of, let's just say, do I have an example here? I uh, will just do 360 feet at 1,000 yards, all right? Um, if, if you then were to take the crop of that binocular, all right, and imagine here is our field of view with a cardboard tube that's 1x. This is what, what it would look like. Now magnify that 10 times. That is going to render a larger circle that's 10 times bigger than this circle. Those trees are now going to be here and here magnified. You have the same linear field of view, A to B. You follow what I'm, what I'm doing here? You've just yeah. magnified from 1x. This is your 1x, your, your naked eye. This is now your 10x. Right, because it's the same distance between the trees. It's just yep. that you're now seeing... You've magnified that more, linear distance. You're seeing more detail of the mm -hmm. distance between those trees and in, in bigger. Yep. Now, ten times bigger. if we fact. take this 10 by 42 that has a linear field of view of 360 feet, what we're saying is, is there's 360 feet from this tree to this tree. There's still 360 feet from this tree to this tree. Right. We've just magnified it. Now, if you want to know... The angular degrees of 360, you just take 360 and divide it by 52.5. Why 52.5? Because one degree at 1,000 yards is 52.5 feet. Oh, okay. So now we know that the angular um, degrees of this field, even naked, even naked eye, that this angular part is 6.8 degrees, actually 6.85. Now... Obviously, this circle, if you consider the 180 degrees from all the way extreme from one end to the other, this circle is a smaller slice of that 180 degrees than this one. To get what this portion is of that 180, you simply multiply 10 power by angular degrees. So the apparent field of view of this binocular is 68.5 degrees. In other words, here's your 180, right? The, uh, the naked eye field of view is actually a pretty narrow thing because we're looking out at 1,000 yards. But when we magnify it, that presentation now covers 68.5 degrees when it's right smack the optic oh, to our of eyes. Of our field of, of view. Of our field of view. It's blocking 68.5 degrees of the 180 or 360 all around us. Yeah. That's what that tells us. Now, if you think about it, if you were comparing apparent field of view, which hardly anybody expresses on specifications, if you had a binocular that had an apparent field of view of 50, one that was 68, and one that was 80, when you think of that in terms of how much that takes from the 180, that can give you, I think, a better visual image of how wide your field of view is. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Because is it that... Hmm. How am I trying... I'm trying to think of how to articulate this in, in, I don't know, in my own terms, I guess, because I feel like you've explained it Pretty pretty well, and obviously very mathematically. But like, if you have an available, I don't know, just field of view to you, mm -hmm. and more of it is being taken up with a detailed image that's magnified of what you're trying to look at, then I suppose I'm trying to get at whether it's like a feel thing or an actual. It's thing. an actual thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, are you feeling like you're getting more detail and like you're getting more stuff that you're yeah. looking at versus like, are you actually getting more stuff that you're looking at? Yeah. You know, like you're the size of the window. 
on a binocular that has a wider field. For example, take um, um, take a spotting scope or a rifle scope with a very narrow field of view, like say the uh, Scout, the Crossfire Scout. If you express out, uh, do the math, and calculate the apparent field of view, it's really quite narrow. Right. And when you look through that scope, because it's a Scout scope, you do see that you have you are working with a fairly narrow compared to the 180 or 360, depending on how you want to look at it, a very small slice. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's telling you, um, and it's also related to magnification, because keep in mind that this is just an example with a 10 power binocular. If we were to redo this, let me erase this for a second. All right. So if we had um, an 8 by 42 and let's say it had the same linear field of view okay. as that 1042, 360 feet at 1,000 yards. That's still not bad, okay? Now, if we calculate, so this is the linear field of view. Now, if we cal calculate the angular degrees, it's the same thing. It's 6.85 from 52 point, dividing 360 by 52.5. Yeah. However, remember the 10 binocular, to get the apparent field of view, we got 68.5 by multiplying that by 10. But the apparent field of view on this 8 by 42 is going to be 6.85 times 8. It's going to be 54. Now, this is interesting because an 8 by 42 has less apparent field of view than a 10 by 42. However, we all know and we all talk about the fact that when you look through an 8 by 42, you can physically see That's more stuff because it's few, it's usually, yeah. now in this case, you've made the linear field of view and the angular field of view the same for the Correct. sake of Correct, which sake is of generally not point. the case. Okay. Got but it. if you did have an 842 and a 1042 that had the same linear field of view, oh, okay. the 10 is actually going to have a wider apparent field of view. I got it. Interesting. Yeah. Which doesn't, okay. if you're looking at binoculars in the same family, usually the yes. 8x42 have yes. a larger angular or linear yeah. field of view. And so that must balance itself out. Kind of does. Yeah. Kind of does. Because you end up, because generally your 842 start with a wider linear field of view, the picture window is going to be pretty close. We try to keep it as uniform as we can. Yeah. So we... we design them so that the apparent field of view isn't going to be overwhelmingly small mm. or just so large that you can't do anything with it. And I don't know what the, if there is a maximum uh, apparent field of view that you can get. I mean, there probably is some limitation to it at some point. Right. I almost feel like a, like apparent field of view seems like another word for immersiveness. Like I you, see what you're saying. Something with, yeah. a, with a really large apparent field of view, you feel more immersed in. Part of it. Like you're in it. You're in the element. You're in yeah. the realm of what, you know, the creatures or whatever you're pursuing yeah. or, or looking for. Like if yeah. you shrunk down to a point where your 180 was actually fully encapsulated by this image that you're looking at through the binocular, you know what I Virtual mean? Virtual reality almost. Right. Yeah. You would be basically, yeah, almost in like a VR, except it is reality. You're just looking through an optic. But anyway, um, you know, but because our you know, 180 degrees is larger than what the binocular can give us because the binocular is small and we have to hold it in our hands and hold it to our face and all that, then we're we're dealing with like a slice of our available 180 degrees of, of natural field of view. It's, I think I'm kind of starting to fall. Are but you you're getting, I am, I think so. Kind okay, of. Let's, um, let's do another example here that's pertinent to our product line. We have one binocular, two technically, but we have an exceptional 10 by 50 in our, 10 by 50 um, of available models. And that's the Viper, 10 by 50. So the Viper. Yeah, we haven't even talked about objective lens diameter. Yep. I don't know if that plays into this. Not as much. Okay. Not as much. So our Viper 10 by 50 has a linear field of view of 346 feet at 1,000 yards. Comparison, the Razor HD is 315. The Diamondback, these are all 1050s by the way, the Diamondback HD is 315. The Crossfire HD is 320. Now look at the exceptional difference between the Viper 10 by 50, all these are 10 by 50s. This binocular, when you compare the actual 
presentation of the apparent field of view, when you look through it, you're going to have more of that immersiveness mm -hmm. compared to the, the other three 10 by 50s in this example. Now, incidentally, our UHD is 341, our Razer UHD, which is fairly close to the 346. Yeah. So that binocular also has uh, a, a pretty decent linear field of view for a 10 by 50. Um, when I started um, in this line of work 23 years ago, a lot of 10 by 50s back in the day had a much narrower linear field of view, like, like 260. 260 to 280. But over the years, we've bumped them up to over 300. I don't see this as much as I used to. Generally, I see most 1050s offering uh, over 300. But 346 is kind of an outlier. And if you calculate that through and calculate out the apparent field of view, remember the, um, the kind of 180 diagram, right? And instead, this time, let's do it from a top view. Let's say here's the observer, and they're looking out over a field. Let's just say this is 1,000 yards out, right? And you've got 180 degrees, oops, ooh, you know, this way, laterally. Now, if you take the 346 and first compute angular degrees, so 346 divided by 52.5, you get 6.6. We'll just say that's the Viper. Okay. And then we'll just do two of these. We'll just do the 315. 315 divided by 52.5, that's 6. So... That's six degrees versus 6.6. .6. Now, that doesn't seem like that big of a difference, but that's a difference of between the 346 and the 315 in a parent times 10. That's 66 degrees versus 60 degrees in a parent field of view. In other words, if you're looking at something um, at 1,000 yards away and you know, you've got your, your windows your apparent field of view on the 315 might be like that, and the one for 346, which is 66 degrees, is going to have three more degrees on either side. Right. So you're you're seeing more. So yeah. let's say the you know you're you're actually physically seeing more through the the binocular, but then you're also what you're getting at with the apparent field of view is it's is it's this feeling you get when you look through it of I guess I'd keep using this term, but like immersiveness, like where it's the image you're looking at is taking up more of your available, you know, 180 degrees of just vision, right? It, Correct. It's, I mean, in some ways, like not, in, not even close, but it's more like a magnified version of your natural sight. Which I think is what everyone... Is what, that right, Mike? Is that kind of, a, was that any sort of like, rough explanation like yeah. when you have a larger apparent field of view it's like a magnified it's like a more similar magnified version to your natural sight yes or no it's okay to that's, say no yeah i mean that's that's not incorrect it it's sort of subjective <laughs> okay it's almost worse when he says um, that <laughs> <laughs> uh i'm not mad i'm just disappointed <laughs> yeah i it, it's it's a tricky thing because we're so used to dealing in linear and angular degrees but could you actually look out at something and say, I know about how many linear feet at 1,000 yards that is. No. I know how many angular degrees at 1,000 yards that, that, that looks like. However, if you think of field of view in, in terms and compare models in terms of apparent field of view, and you've got that 180 baseline, and you know that if you do the math out and you look at the apparent field of views, and you know that's a chunk from that 180 that's right in front of my face. Yeah, and the yeah. larger apparent apparent field of view is, the bigger that window is that you're looking through when you look out into the field, giving you that sort of pseudo virtual virtual reality, which is what a lot of people envision in their mind's eye. And this is, I think, what really the importance. If we get down to like, why are we even talking about apparent field of view? Is you have to realize that when you look through an optic, you have a set of expectations, and Correct. oftentimes people's expectations are not like realistic. I mean, if we're all being super honest with ourselves, like you get a set of binoculars and you immediately think, you know, I've got a superpower now. I can see everything really far away. I've got magnified eagle vision. And so like you hold them up to your face and well, you know, usually it is pretty impressive. Most people are usually sort of like, wow, you know, their first reaction, especially if they're newer to binoculars or something, or if they get a nice set. But 
it's not literally like you switch to flip in, or flip to switch, excuse me, in your brain and all of a sudden everything just got magnified. You know what I mean? Right. Like you're still you are still living in a 1x world that is this 180 that, you know, Mike is mm. talking about or the 360 te- technically. But then you're putting something in front of that, in front of your eyes that's taking up a bit of that that is magnified. So it's not like the whole thing just suddenly became boop 10x. It's it's a ring within yeah, your available exactly. site that we're only 10X. using the 10x. We're kind of ignoring the magnification inside that field of view for a moment. We're only using the 10x, the magnification, as how to get to the size of that apparent field of view. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's that's one of the um, you know the variables that you put into that formula. Yeah, and I was going to say something else about that. Oh, dang it! It'll, but it'll come to me. What I think you're getting at as well, and, and part of the reason why we're talking about this is because a lot of people don't think about apparent field of view when they're looking at. Uh, when they're looking at an optic, it is something that they can calculate out, and it may lead to if they if they determine that you know, um, I guess it's still probably something to be considered in your trade offs, right? Yeah. Like, do I want to go with let's say the Viper HD 10 by 50? It's got this big apparent field of view compared to say the Razor HD 10 by 50, but the Razor HD 10 by 50 maybe has better optical quality. So now it's 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 yeah. another one of the things that you're trying to. Well, I think if you were if like let's say you're comparing a couple different models and the apparent field of view like it's not a listed spec but i but i bet people are they're still noticing it and sure they're they still are. basing they're like i just like this one better here's another example of where calculating out apparent field of view might help aid a, a consumer in a purchasing decision take two of our spotting scopes for example we're going to compare the apparent field of view on high end and low end of magnification from the razor hd85 to the Diamondback HD85, and the the difference is going to surprise you, maybe a little bit. Have Spotters you ever noticed? Yeah, here. spotting scopes. Have you ever noticed on some variable optics? This is also true for rifle scopes. Um, when you zoom in and out, the circle gets larger and smaller. Sure. The apparent field of view mm-hmm. is getting mm-hmm. your linear field of view is actually changing too, but it's getting narrower. Right. Because you're magnifying things, and some things are falling off the edge. Yeah, when you're magnifying, but if we look at the the actual uh, linear uh, and angular specifications, let's do the Razor twenty seven to sixty by eighty five. So there are two field of view specifications on a zoom optic, high and low magnification. So on low power, the linear field of view is one hundred and seventeen feet at a thousand yards. And at, when you're at 60 power, it's 68 feet. Uh, compared to that, the Diamondback, which is a 20 to 60 by 85, that linear field of view, low power is 108 feet at 1,000 yards, and it just happens to be 60 feet at 1,000 yards. When you count using the 52.5, one degree at 1,000 yards, um, for the razor, you get an angular of 22 point, or 2.22, that's the angular degrees, and 1.29. On the Diamondback, you get 2.05 and 1.14. When you calculate this out to a parent field of view, on the razor at low power, you get 59.94. That's the angular field of view. And at 60 power, believe it or not, you get 77 degrees. Oh, that's the apparent field of Appar- view. These are the apparent fields of view. So the apparent field of view went up despite the fact that the yep. angular slash yep. linear field of view went down. Here's the thing that's going to blow your mind. On the Diamondback, when you when you work it out, the math, the apparent field of view is 41 degrees on 20 power. And it's 68 degrees on high power. Look at the Look at the spread difference here. And when you zoom through the Diamondback, when you're at low power, the circle is fairly small, the apparent field. And as you zoom up, it gets larger really quick. On the Razor, as you go from 27 to 60, it does increase, but it's more uniform. Hmm. So when if you were to calculate out using the provided linear specifications on, a, on two different spotting scopes, the bigger difference between these two numbers, the more of a big, small circle, big circle you're going to get in a parent field of view as you run yeah. through the zoom. 
you're putting math to something that a lot of people just look at and it's just like a feel sure. thing. You would know it instantly. If you had both spotting scopes in front of you, right. you would you if you ran them both down the low power and zoomed all the way up, went to the razor, zoomed all the way up, you would see it. Right. Mm-hmm. But if you didn't have the opportunity to look through an optic and you were just curious uh, if a particular zoom optic had that effect, you could calculate out the apparent field of view, and the bigger the spread between those two numbers is, you know at low power you're going to have a fairly narrow field of view, and at high power it's going to be, you know, it's going to get much wider. Hmm. The bigger that spread is, that might be a little too technical, but that's something you can use apparent field of view for. But it's still the same thing. It's just the size of that circle, the presentation out of that 180 or 360 slice. Right. And what's what's kind of interesting. Um, you may have noticed looking at some of these numbers uh, from both binoculars and um, you'll notice that a lot of the numbers we came up with in apparent field of view are kind of like often between 60 and say 70. Okay. And I don't know if it's just that's the way optics have been designed for so long. That appears to be like the average apparent field of view that you're going to run into is going to be within this range. Most binoculars work out to this. Most spotting scopes work out to this. Now, if you were going to do this with rifle scopes, because rifle scopes are the linear field of view is expressed in feet at 100 yards, rather than using the 52.5 in the math, you would use 5.25. Okay. Because you're just shifting the decimal point over. But the math works out exactly the same. Now, it's so like a lot for a long time. I guess we're going long, but uh, yeah. it seems to be the way 10-minute talks go these days, um, as in every day since the beginning of 10-minute talks. But um, for a long time, I always thought apparent field of view, and I'm actually thinking what I thought about apparent field of view still does play into what, in reality, apparent field of view is. But it would be like, you know, people look at the Razor 1-6, to six and they're like, the amazing thing about the Razor 1-6 to six or the Razor 1-10 to 10 is that when I look through the optic, the rifle scope, the, basically the body around it disappears, right? And so... Again, you're getting a little bit more of like an immersive experience in some ways by looking through that optic because it doesn't feel like you're looking through a tube. It feels like your vision just all of a sudden got better right there in front of your eye. And so, you know, like for example, some people like to run flip caps on their on their rifle scopes. I don't blame them in, in many instances, but you run a flip cap on your eyepiece of a rifle scope and it makes your apparent, at least what I've always called the apparent field of view, seem smaller because you have a bigger black ring around the yeah. outside. And so, but what I'm thinking is, even though I wasn't, what I was describing as apparent field of view wasn't really probably mathematically apparent field of view, it was taking up more of your available like 180 that we've talked about so much and making you feel more like you're looking through a tube and you're blocking out yep. more stuff. Apparent field of view is part of that. You have to have a, an optic with a wide apparent field of view to still make that an enjoyable experience. Right. But for reasons I do not know, that maybe one of our engineers would know, Right. if you have a thick field stop because of the body, the outer body of the tube, like a, a thick eye cup or thick armoring, and there's a big area blocking your 180, mm-hmm. for whatever reason, when you eliminate that and you only have, like right at the field stop, there's landscape and stuff back there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, That appears to add to that immersive experience, even though the apparent fields of view are exactly the same. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Right. And so that's why, like, you know, for me, even on even on red dots and stuff like that, like if I got a strike fire too, I almost always take the flip caps off. Or I get the right. strike eagle one to six that comes with the flip caps, something like that. I usually take them off because, like, I want to get as close to that experience as possible. And I guess maybe... Now, I don't know if I'm maybe potentially going to take advantage of the warranty if I ever have an issue. I've never had an issue with any of my lenses getting scratched. Uh, but um, I just like it so much more when I look through it. It doesn't feel like I'm looking through something. It just feels like yeah. all of a sudden, like, boom. Well, there are reasons that that's beneficial because if this is technically the whatever, you know, a design of a thick eye cup or armoring or whatever it is, the housing, that's an obstruction of sorts mm-hmm. that could... Um, hinder your ability to detect movement in your peripheral vision. If you do have like an LPVO with an extremely wide apparent field of view and you don't have much around it in terms of an an obstruction, um, that's going to make that viewing experience not only, you know, when you're shouldering that firearm with that 
LPVO at low power and you don't have that much surrounding the field stop on it, it's kind of like you're just panning around in that 180 or 360 with a magic window without any yes. obstructions that's kind of going along as you move your rifle around. I'm right. oh, sorry, I didn't mean to muzzle you guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mike just yeah. air muzzled all yeah. of us, all of you but guys as that, well. So it, it would be beneficial in designing uh, optics, it, whether it's a spotting scope, a binocular, to keep in mind that the thickness of what you have surrounding the ocular, the eyepiece, could make the view could change the viewing experience. You you could mm -hmm. technically it seems like we've tested this on some some optics. I don't know if you saw any of those samples. It's confidential, right? right. Yeah, right. you can cut you can this out. Confirm or deny. I'll just say you can cut it out. Mike Rosen changed the eye cup, I think, on a UHD so that it's almost not there, right? And the viewing experience is totally different when you when you hold that binocular up. There's like no binocular mm. around your hands, and it changes everything when you look through it. I don't know of one person yet who's looked it through that binocular. It changes everything and nothing at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, what is that? It's when we vote. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> oh, zinger. <laughs> We've lost Jim. We've lost Jim. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, no, uh, but I haven't yet heard of someone saying that that's a detracting thing. They seem to like it. So, mm. yeah, and again, cut this out, but... Rosen's I got a binocular. If you haven't looked through it, I sincerely hope we cut none of this out. It's uh, in. It's uh, in. But he's got a binocular where he's taken that, he's modeled a binocular to do that, to have minimal obstructions. And it does change your viewing experience when looking through it. And everybody who's looked through that so far thinks it's a positive thing. See, now people are going to stop buying binoculars until yeah, we, <laughs> until we come up with them. Right? You've unleashed Mike. <laughs> yes. uh, so, again, cut it all. out if it's you know something you don't want the public to know. But Rosen's big on it. So I think he wants to do that in a binocular at some point down Very the road. Very interesting. Five years down, who knows, right? But um, look through it if you haven't seen it. Ask Rosen for it because it's pretty cool. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Okay. Um, what would be some, if you have them, some examples? Like let's say I'm, I'm, I'm glassing a hillside, you know, X amount of yards away. Got my tripods on a binocular. My Other tripods, yeah. We've both done that. What did you say earlier? I don't remember. I'm just pointing out that you did it, too, to make myself feel better. Um, like, if you have a larger apparent field of view, like, what is the practical benefit that a person would experience? Like, I'm glassing for yeah. bears or I'm looking for a deer. Like, yeah. what will be the experience that they would describe if they had a larger apparent field of view? Yeah, and first off, let me take that a step back. And I don't know if this was brought up in one of the previous... 10 minute talks about um, myth busting. Mm -hmm. It's important for the end user um, or the, sh the consumer when looking at binoculars not to confuse the aperture with the field of view. You're talking about the objective lens yeah, diameter? Yeah, the, the objective mm -hmm. lens diameter. 56 is not necessarily going to be a wider linear field of view than a 50 or a parent field of view than oh, a 50. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. In fact, some, it's often not Correct. the case. But what you get, let's say you do. You're out in the field. You've, you're you, maybe you've got you know a valley or draw that you're looking at. You're looking for game or whatever, and you've got a uh, tripod and you're mounting binoculars on it. If you had a binocular with a larger apparent field of view, okay, that's going to give you the larger window to immerse yourself as you're either you know kind of a, a more of a panoramic effect. Generally, a binocular with a larger apparent field of view is also going to have, at same magnification, a larger linear field of view. Mm -hmm. So you get two wins. You're covering more physical territory, and your window is bigger. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. It seems, it seems like... That was a question. Do these things you know, go hand in hand and looking at they the do. math? And like, they oh, do. a bigger number yeah. times this number is giving you... But remember the example of the 842. Right. You can have... You know, a binocular with the same linear field of view, but because of the different magnification, the 10 renders the, the larger apparent field of yeah, view. Right. It seems a little bit like I could see the, the practical difference being uh, almost a parallel to if you're watching TV on a on a 42-inch TV or something like that, and it's 50 feet away from you versus it's 20 feet away from you. That's a good you analogy. You see more detail, mm -hmm. even though it's the same size TV. And so... 
you know, I feel like if you are in that more immersive experience with a larger apparent field of view, you know, not only are you covering more ground, but for whatever reason, I feel like it's easier to pick up detail, like the movement of a coos deer at, you know, 800 yards away when they flick their ear finally after you've been staring for five hours. Uh, <laughs> it's easier to see that when you are more immersed in the image with a larger apparent field of view than it is if the, if the, if the image almost feels like it's further away or it's not taking up as much of your available vision. Uh, that's how I would see it. And you can clearly see, if you run this to its logical conclusion, imagine you're in the front row seat at an IMAX. Why don't you like to do Some people like to do that, but typically, why do people not like to do that? It's so big, you might miss something because it's way over on the other side. Right. You could theoretically have too wide of an apparent field of view with too high of magnification that you might you might not be able to oh, yeah, all of a sudden enjoy. You're, you're not taking advantage detect, of what you right. have. That's why I think, and I don't know the optics history behind this, why that number in apparent field of view seems to stick around like 60, 70 ish. I'd love to there. know a, some sort of an yeah. eye, an eye slash vision scientist explain yeah. how like our different our different levels of periphery and where we focus. It's got to be something like that. We, I think yeah. that they you know they did experiments with increasing apparent field of view and maybe along with magnification and then maybe they had so something moving you know just me mechanical machines or whatever they had like targets moving targets something like when can you see it coming from the left when can you see it coming from the right yeah and probably came up with this sort of area right here is where most people can see what's going on right but obviously you can with the example of the movie screen you can probably make it too large that it's 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 a hindrance rather yeah. than a benefit Jim, we had an uh, uh, an audiologist on the podcast, really good podcast, talking about hearing and hearing loss. That's right. That's right. Maybe we need to get a ophthalmologist on the podcast at some point. Is that what you call him? I believe so. Mike, ophthalmologist, eye doctor, cool optometrist, somebody who makes prescription lenses. Oh, something. maybe that's what I said. Oh. More. Or or checks your an ophthalmologist and an optometrist can check it. your vision. One's a doctor. One's a hack. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> um, Mike is Mike's on the full of beans Mike's today. On the warpath today. <laughs> um, it's kind of like the difference between real psychiatrists and psychologists. One's a PhD medical doctor, and one's you know talk therapist. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, sometimes one's think, a social worker. Sometimes I think you're an optical talk therapist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <clears throat> Does uh, that, do you guys kind of, was this useful? I actually followed it. Yeah, 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 so. yeah it's cool. Yeah, it, I'll probably have to listen to it again. <laughs> um, but it, did you learn? Yeah. You learn something? It's from really it? cool. It's interesting, isn't it? But it, here's what's interesting is, why isn't that number published? <laughs> it's, it's actually, I think it's a pretty useful number. But well, th then you've got Mike, three there are fields of view. Yeah. To be fair, and not not to not to uh, poke fun at anyone, there's oftentimes a struggle with people just determining or deciphering things from the numbers we give them already. True. True. And making a lot of yeah. unfortunate assumptions based on the numbers that they're given without a lot of background knowledge. Well, you can still, I mean, I Hopefully can... Hopefully, they listen to the Vortex Nation podcast yes. more, and then they'll learn more about these things. They yeah. achieve total optical enlightenment, That's Jim. right. Yep. And uh, but I can't, so I can see, actually, from a, like, information input standpoint, like, you can give people enough information, and I'm not... I'm not I'm including myself in this. Jim, you know how I like to make decisions. Um, where they can still get to where they need to go without like overwhelming oh, with yeah, 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 maybe yeah. potentially extraneous information um, that could hinder their decision and maybe actually not get them where they need to go because it's too much. It's easy enough to give t to customers if they call up and ask for it or whatever, you get an email. Just remember... The formula to calculate a parent field of view is that simple. It's magnification times the angular degrees. And if you only have the linear feet at 1,000 yards, you just divide that number by 52.5 first, and then you run that through this. Or 5.25, it's right. For rifle scopes, because it's at 100 yards. Okay. But, it, you know, that that is that is a good argument for why you don't need to publish it, because the formula is so easy Fairly to simple. remember. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mike? I love it. Thank you. I I always truly enjoy when you jump on here with us. Well, you're very welcome. You're just full of optical knowledge. 
picked you up something after 23 nobody, years, huh? Nobody puts Mike in a box. You can't put him on a 10-minute talk. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, if you've listened uh, so far, or if you've gotten this far. Somebody uh, was like, I was just going to the grocery store, and now i got to go to the grocery store like four right. more times to get, you know. Well, yeah. cut it down. There was some extraneous stuff in there. S- spoiler yeah, alert: is good. It, it is not a ten-minute talk right this now. This was good, Mike. All right. Um, I'm, well, poking, I'm glad you I'm guys poking fun it. at ourselves. Okay. All awesome. right. Well, apparently we went long, guys, but I think it was worth it. Did you guys think it was worth it? Do you have any questions? Do you, is a parent field of view something that you consider? Something you've wondered about? Let us know. And uh, until next time, happy Bye-bye. hunting and shooting. Catch you on the next one. Bye.